All right, guys, just a wee reminder that we are now on Patreon for as little as £3 a month. You can sign up and get access to an extra episode every two weeks, as well as some exciting bonus content, including what would that be, guys? Uh, you can see the live shows that we've recorded on there, uh, the one from December, one that will be coming up in next month. April, the Easter April. show. We'll live be at the Glee. Live at the Glee, baby. And you can also get um, exclusive first access to tickets for future live shows that we do, because yeah. those two have both sold pretty quick. Yeah. Absolutely. First place to get them. Yeah. With more to come as well, got some more plans in the pipeline um for that. So do check it out. And so if you'd like to, to sign up to that, please do so. But uh save to that guys. Enjoy today's episode. Enjoy the days. Have a good one. Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was just some laugh. Well, some laughs. Laughs. well no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. Well, nice to see you, boys. Aye, Sad. here he is. The king returns, eh? The return of the king. From the kings. From the kings. It was a lot of fun. I'd like to thank everybody who came out. Thank you very much for... Come to the show. Got a big cheer when I mentioned the podcast, I must say. I was in the audience. So I right. wasn't there for that. I hope you sent a Native American up for me, like Marlon Brando, <laughs> to collect the... <laughs> I did. I actually was doing a joke about uh, short kings. I heard, did hear about this. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't... didn't uh, <laughs> It did make it to me. It certainly did. It didn't take me by surprise that I was included in the Short Kings. It took me by surprise that you were one of the Short Kings. In my head, it's actually me and you and CMB. Ah, but he's I just a Short thought, King for sure. Ah. I just thought it's self mentioned. But yeah, it's a boy. It's a it's a boy. It's a boy. You're probably an average. Average hey, king. Average king. Average prince. Yeah. I, d- yeah. I was talking about specifically under six foot, so you do. Make yeah. It. I qualify. You fit that you remit. Comfortably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was nice. I was getting. Recognised left, right, and centre in your audience. Man. You're just there stealing focus. I was <laughs> spotlight on you. <laughs> it's like one of those old unevening with Billy Connolly, whatever. <laughs> Got the great and the good here tonight. Just like Ringo yeah, Starr or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really <laughs> <laughs> No, it was. It was. I mean, honestly, best gig of my life. It was amazing. Um, I was glad I couldn't be there for you, man. I'm looking forward to seeing the footage. I will. Uh, uh, luckily, I filmed it all, and and it went well. And I just, um, I, I just couldn't have went there, so I was just over the moon because I'd put in so much work over the last couple of months uh, for that, to the detriment of fucking some of the, <laughs> some of the promotion for this. But um, no, it was, it was amazing, and the crowd were great. I was just worried because you could see me as if, you know, most amount of people I've ever played a solo show to, so you're just worried that it could only take one person shouting it or something to fuck it. But everybody was pretty much well behaved, and actually, in time, something did happen in the room. It was really. It worked really well. Yeah. And I get dead lucky with it. So, I just amazing. What a night. Yeah, no, you smashed it. You looked very comfortable on stage. Well, that was the biggest thing I would say is that I just tried to not get in my own way. Because I think with all these big things, is like you always try and start overthinking it and doing try to think consciously about stuff that you normally do. If there's any other gig, you just got there about yeah. thinking and just do what you normally do. So that's what I tried to do. Do what you normally do. To the point as well where I'm like, I'm not going to pure good and milk the fucking... Uh, you know, as if I'm pure some big rock star or something. I'm just gonna take after, make it to stand. Hey, cherry picker. Uh, after you got off the cherry picker, it was more like <laughs> that. <laughs> it was uh, up at that, that moment. I was like, this guy, is, he's milking a bit. Still need a bit of razzmatazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a night at the theatre after all, isn't it? Absolutely. But no, it was great fun. My night. How was your solo show, Stu? You done two? You you done two solos at the standing? Obviously, yeah. Yeah, they were great, man. They're really fun. Yeah, a little similar of like Tuesday was just like. You know, you're just like in the zone and it's like you're not thinking about it and it's just so much fun. And You know when you're just in flow or whatever on stage and you're not thinking? Yeah. Like, they're so precious, those moments, I think, because they don't happen that often. No. But then when I was filming on Wednesday, I was a bit more in my head. I was trying not to be, but it was just impossible not to be. It's, it's just really that was great. To, that was really fun. Not, but I know, because I, I was on a bit on Tuesday. I caught the last 20 minutes or something. And uh, mm. it's funny, actually, a guy came up to me. Uh, I was just standing at the edge of the bar, in kind of the back of the room. A guy came up and he just like, said they liked the podcast. And then two seconds later, he taps me again and he's like, he'd just obviously been in the bathroom and he was on his way back and he's like, it's all right if I go back to my seat. I was like, is that a di- am I a dick if I go back to my seat? I was like, no, it's fine, man. And I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm glad that the people that listen to this podcast have heard this moan about audiences <laughs> so much that they're scared to be a dick. Yeah, so it is fine to just go to the bathroom and, and go back. And he was right up the back as well, so then they just dropped in. Unless you're in like a Frankie Boyle gig. Don't do that there. Frankie doesn't like it, I don't think. He but doesn't let you back in. But you do, <laughs> Stu. You're not fussy. I'm not fussy in yeah. any sense ever. And uh, 
not to name drop, but when I was, I was supporting John Cairns the night after, Absolutely. we were chatting about shit like that. And he, we were just both bonding over how, like, if we peek behind the curtain and we just see a sea of nerds, we're happy. <laughs> I just want to see as many nerds as possible in Martins. That's it. Com- That's comedy nerds, particularly. But yeah. no, it was good. I know, because I was freaking out about the Kings, because, like, folk that fucking used to work my mom and aunties and are all coming that probably never seen it before. And I'm like, they're not going to like all this stuff about eating ass or whatever. <laughs> 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 but it was fine. It was fine. So, uh, it, was it did make time. me laugh when you, you went into that bit because you did sound like such an old guy. Like, the young yins are eating ass. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, don't, don't ruin the material. The Sorry. special about shortly. We'll see you. We'll see you. But see no, no, thank you. No, it was, it, was cool to, it was cool to film it, man, because that was the other thing as well. Like, I just, um, you've only really got one shot at it, and everybody usually films it twice. Yeah, that was my problem it. as well, then. And so just, I just had to just try and not think about it as much, but, oh, what a night. It just it went in, it just flew in, but, aye. I enjoyed stuff. the pub after. The pub after was that. great. Mm-hmm. We actually, Lassie behind the bar, who last for a photo was, was a, a listener. Yep. As she well. Yeah, she's like, can we get, can I get a photo? Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. And then Mark, it was after last orders, Mark, showbiz Mark, used it to negotiate, used it as leverage to negotiate three shots of baby Guinness. <laughs> can which I think is unacceptable. <laughs> no, 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 because listen, I'm like, look, I'm totally fine getting a picture, but you work here and we aren't the old drinks anymore. We'll take a drink. I think it's uh, and then, but and baby Guinness, it's not as if it's taking them fucking. It's not we've ordered three fucking cocktails or something. It took them two seconds. It's just a regular Guinness for me when I picked it up. <laughs> Short <to> Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> picked it up. It was huge, huge <laughs> pint. I got. But no, yeah, it was a good friend fun. of the show, baby Guinness. <laughs> Aye, no, it was great. great yeah, fun. it was a good night. We, I was uh, slay. I didn't stay out. Went to slay. There's about three people there. Um, <laughs> Massive room, three people. Oh, really? Yeah, no, 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 oh, right. not even sure. old. Um, I bet it was, it was good. We went to McDonald's after. We did. Jen, Jennings got a, a bunless. I got a bunless triple burger. triple burger. Even on the piss, still no carbs. I, that's because the thing is, see, because I was walking towards that show and I was, I was losing weight for it and all that, I'm like, I can't let. Like, I've had a weekend now and I'm like, right, I can't just let this. It's like fucking Steven Gerald, don't let this slip. You know, I was like, because <laughs> I just, I was uncomfortable with my weight for so long. And now I've just got back to a bit where I'm I'm relatively happy. Still know quite where I want to be, but I'm happier now and I'm like, I can't just go straight back up. Straight, straight down. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to try and be as disciplined as I can be. It's quite useful though, because uh, the machine that I'd, I'd ordered this on the, the McDonald's big giant iPad, the machine didn't print out my wee ticket for my number. Nightmare. So I went up, I was like, oh, how are they going to know what one it is? And they're like, I was like, uh, I think there's a, a, a burger in Some it, chicken nuggets, a and burger like, a three triple burger bunless. Like, yeah, that's me. Like, fucking take it, mm-hmm. take it. Not away. many people ordering that at this time. <laughs> nah, and Wh- the- which is the opposite order from. I'm sure we mentioned this before, but our mate Stephen, when we used to be in school, we would go to McDonald's <laughs> every bun. Friday, and he would get uh, to- <laughs> they'd, and he'd ask for toasted buns because <laughs> he was a fussy eater, and then it was the, to the point where they like. Recognise them coming in there, like you could see them. Well, it's a fucking toasted buns guy. <laughs> yes, but nowadays would compliment so, each other yeah. so well. Going to McDonald's, he I takes know. your buns, you take them. Mate. I could have done. I know, honestly, that would have been, been split a meal together. <laughs> it's not That's the first controversy I'm... with buns you've had with somebody for school. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking kissing them, but I tell you, they're really toasted. Um, do you know that? That's the thing, though. Do you, I've honestly had like three McDonald's in the last fucking. Five, ten, five years or something. Like I that, wish I could say the same. I, I just go to every other. Me and chain. Steve go to McDonald's all the time. Ah, uh, all the time, and, and they always, always get, get our order wrong every single time. It's like a joke now. It's like they, <laughs> I'm like specifically no ketchup, and they give me extra ketchup. Yeah, on yeah. all the time. I sometimes score an extra burger at it. Yeah, I remember. I yeah, I had to give you my burger because I drenched in ketchup, and you gave me two chicken nuggets to compensate. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I've got for them, I sorry. cannot believe that you fucking like. Talk about childhood trauma. Just going for you this fucking one with. hang of a fucking bean pizza and you can't have fucking ketchup in your fucking burger. Listen, I don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. It's horrible. Did I tell you what happened when I got home that night? Uh, you don't even eat fucking bread and you're t- talking to me about ketchup? <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Okay. So it. when I went home, I left you on Black Bath Street, <laughs> you go to sleep. I'm like, right, fuck this, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm in my kitchen, I've got my headphones on, I've put chicken dippers in the air fryer. You know, life's good, I'm happy. And I'm pacing around vaping. <laughs> you're a modern man. Music. I'm having a great time. <laughs> and like five minutes go by and I, like the lights are off in my front room and the blinds are down and there's only about that. It's like a foot. And I'm just fucking in my own world. You know, Ollie's in bed, I'm just cutting about. And then after about three minutes, I look out the window and I realise there's a face at the window 
and it's fucking Mario Lane, friend of the show. <laughs> She's like crooking down, at, like with a beanie hat on. It's like pitch black, and it's really spooky and weird because you need to like vault my fence to get into the garden to then like yeah. No one's e- no one's ever been at that window before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you want? And like basically the. Our, our pal just needed a piss and she knew where I lived so she's like alright we'll go here but it was so fucking creepy the way she went about it because she didn't she's not got a phone so <laughs> she couldn't phone. phone me and she was crouched covered in mud in my front garden <laughs> and she had a paper aeroplane she'd written on this paper aeroplane only Marilyn would think to do this but she was like I was going to throw it in your window I was like why would my fucking window be open it's like two in the morning <laughs> fucking nuts and then so I let them in they went to the toilet but they didn't even realise that like Matt, she forgot the, my front door is always unlocked anyway, basically, so you can mm. just walk in. There's no need to make a paper airplane. There's no need to troll through mud. There's no need to creep me out in the dead of night. Did she not have chapped the window? That well, I had headphones first... on. I think she probably was chapping the window, but... So she thought paper airplane's an export a call? Yeah, I mean, if that's me, I'd just probably hurry my friend home, I think. I don't think I'd... Yeah, because they went to Slay as well, did they not? So did they, they came back later on, and I was wondering where they were. They could have pissed in Slay. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Easily. But take it up with her. Do you know, see, years ago, right? It wasn't long after I'd moved into the house that, that like, my mum and dad moved into. And uh, I remember just being in the kitchen one night, and then I looked at the window, and there was, like, a guy just, just sprinted in. And like, and the and look, look, like into my driveway, and he just looked right in the window, and then kept sprinting. I fucking shot myself, man. He was like on the run for the police. I think he tried to burgle a house nearby, and he just, and then I think he's seen the fucking police chasing after him, or they were driving the boot or something. But I just like get the fucking fright of my life, and like every time I'm in the kitchen at night, in that <laughs> kitchen, I still think of that. Fuck's <laughs> as if it'll happen again. I'd, I, we had that at mine once as well, similar thing. We got right. robbed, didn't we? Yeah, no, I mean, like, at my parents' house, there was, like, a guy checking under, like, they had, like, plant pots and stuff, and he was, like, cutting about, sort of. Aye. Just, like, a dodgy guy. We got broken into the first house I lived in, in Scotston, we got broken into, and I was a wee guy, I was maybe, like, two or three, but... Aye, I, I didn't I, even know you used to live there. Aye, that was my first house. It's your secret shame, you keep that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, but I, I, like, I've got this, I don't know if I'm making it up, though, but I've got a memory of seeing that guy like when at that age in the house but i don't know if it's just because people have told me that's what happened yeah, maybe this is why you're into horror movies and stuff yeah like. my real life real so life you horror. remember seeing the guy that robbed you I, I i i like when i was growing up i always go oh yeah i seen that and i don't think i would have because i don't think I'd, i could have remembered young. that when i was like two or three no. but, but we used to use were in the house when you get robbed i we were sleeping it was at night Ah. And it was like it stole something from like the I don't know, there was like something in the radiator or something like a That's where I keep all my valuables in the radiator. <laughs> it's like when people safe. take the fucking lead off the roofs or something like that in the radio. Something radiator. like that, I and really? like different things like that. And I remember I in my head I've woken up, went out, seen a guy and then went back into my bed and fallen asleep. Mm. But I don't know if I, I probably didn't actually happen, but here's a question. But they did get robbed. Just that's came up through that. Did you did you ever at any point try and run away from home as a kid? I don't recall doing that. Uh, if I did, I would have only gone to my grand and granddad's and they literally lived like five doors up on the same aye. street. No, I don't remember running away from home. I remember um, like <laughs> planning an escape route. Like, so I, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, uh, me and my mate stupidly ran across a train track one time and a train pulled up and shouted that he's like, we're getting done. So I ran a home. A train pulled up? I did, like, kind of, we just like ran across. a pretty fly for a white guy video, but with a train. <laughs> What's that? What do you mean? Well, they pull up in the car. I pull, people pull up in cars, but I've never heard of a train pulling up The train up came to a halt <laughs> because right. we ran across the thing and then he shouted at us as we ran away. Where the boots was this? Uncle Patrick. So we ran so, across. So like actually, so it's not like one of the like, in movies in like, in America where they've got a train track that goes like, but it's just on, a, on the on, on the road. road. No, no like, so you actually went doing into the fucking bit that you're not meant to go doing on to. Yeah, Fuck stupidly. Sake. Yeah, that was stupid. Uh, because it was like you know how under the Erskine Bridge, there's like you go along towards the Uncle Patrick Station. Patrick Station. Yeah, yeah. That never used to have a fence, so you could go down the the dirt hill to, onto the track and across to the other side uh-huh. where we wanted to go. And then, so, so yeah, so you, so you actually you were kind of it was level because it was by the station. So you just walked in a hill and then you're on the track. Aye, aye, okay. And then jumped across the other side, and he was like, I, I, we're, "I'm phoning the police on you." So I went home and like 
changed my clothes. And... <laughs> <laughs> and like... fake mustache, <laughs> Put the clothes I was wearing in a bag and hid it under my bed and all that. And I was like, oh, if the police are going to come at any moment and fucking catch me. Yeah. Uh, and They're going to think you've robbed the train with a disguise that elaborate. <laughs> uh, but I've never outed myself. I've never... I'm a really I'm glad, it I'm it. It's got to be a statute of limitations on <laughs> going across train tracks. That was a big stupid. Do train do shit was a big deal when I was in high school. That was a big, you know. I feel like we were always getting told not to fuck about on train tracks. That was yeah, one yeah. of the main things we got taught. Yeah. Was yeah. there a train track near you? Yeah, we used to play football. We used to always kick the ball into the train track and then give someone a footy up, and they would go and get it mm. all the time. But I was always too feared, obviously. Mm. Right. Shite back. I know. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it is easy to avoid a train. Like, ah, there, you can see it coming ages of it. Yeah, so actually, it's fine. He got done. <laughs> used to always, used to I, actually, you that. I saw, but it's that's just what they fucking want you to believe, right? <laughs> see, go down to the train tracks, it's fine. There's nothing, you know, you'll hear it. I got hit by a train, never did me any him. <laughs> <laughs> they used to always talk about getting electrocuted. Yes. And also that the train from the power of it sucks you under somehow. That's, that's what they say. always used to say. If you stand how am I getting under a train? Line. Yeah. You know how those boxes, you know how those electric boxes you yeah. get, and then sometimes they've, you've got an electric box and there's a fence around it to stop you getting in? Yeah. See if you touch that box. Would you get electrocuted? Do you get electrocuted? Nah. Fine. Surely not. It's all right. I know, it? but I used to think that. I still think that. <laughs> That's why I'm asking the question. Do you, what surely I'm, not. But because surely all the wires are inside, but so is it just, just extra box, protection? Ah, it must yeah. just be a Probably. box. Probably. So, so there's not a bunch of wires out in the rain. No. Yeah. But why is it? What, what's the need for the the I fence? Somebody opens it, I suppose. I guess I. But I don't know. It just seems a bit. Yeah, bit it's extra. weird that some of them have fences and some of them don't, which makes me think some of that's like the really. They're the really electric ones, yeah. but electric's electric. Yeah, right. that's what I was taught. Uh, well, to believe. I don't know what. I don't no. know what these guys are up to. Have you ever run away from home? No, but I remember being at my. I used to be at my cousin's house a lot growing up, and I remember. And my wee cousin Christopher, who's only like two years younger than me, but you know, but like at the time, <laughs> it was like, and I remember him up here packing his case and that. But then they just did a wee, like, there's a literally was a green box just outside their flats, and he just went and you could just see him for the window just sitting there, like, after he'd look pure stormed out and that, like fucking nine or something, probably. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I don't recall doing it myself. I don't recall. Yeah. Although I would say two traumatic ish incidents happened to me. Not traumatic, but at the time it felt like a big deal. Um, because, again, they, I used to always be at theirs. and So they lived in the flats around the corner for, for where my house was. And we used to always play in the wee play park. And I remember one time getting... Uh, somebody flung a fucking rock at my wee cousin Christopher. And he ducked. And as he ducked, I'd come doing the shoot. And I, at the end, end of the shoot, so the fucking rock hit me. And I've still got a scar there. All right. And I had to fucking run run like pure... Yeah, there was a bit of a big fuck off cut at the time and pure run around bleeding and all that and it was like uh, that's what happened because somebody hit me with a fucking rock then a very similar thing I ran around in a similar way but one time just because I was scared of some guy's dog <laughs> 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 I used to I was scared of dogs for years but to be fair it was one of the big devil dogs that bams have and he was a bam so <laughs> that was the two times that I remember uh, you, running to my house you have been scared of dogs uh, that what? You kind of are a bit scared of dogs. No, nah, I'm fine with them now. I just, I, I probably. I'm slightly scared of dogs. Guys, you're so shit. I'm not dogs. really the biggest fan. I didn't like, grow up with I do them. like them, but it's where I dug the day. It's where I dug the day. <laughs> but. Can't I love them now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, I don't mind them now, but I did. I For years, I was scared of dogs, and I think the, the triggering point that, and there was also this mad. I mean, not really horrible wee bulldogs, but they're not even bulldogs. They're just no good. They've got the mad. Fucked up nose <laughs> thing, like they just uh, look pugs. No, I don't know. I don't no, even I know. know what I, don't, I never know what dogs are called. But but another one, you they, they just look like wee monsters. And I remember somebody had that again. Just as some of the bams that used to have dogs everywhere around here. And for like, and when I stay in <laughs> fucking, uh, I so it was just that that's put me off. Yeah, I like dogs. No, do you have a dog grown up? Yeah, Toto. Oh yeah, shit so. But nah. yeah. but that was the closest I came. But I remember that that was a big deal when I was a wee guy. That fucking big cut that I got and fucking hit me a, a, a rock. Uh, have you? Did you ever have fights or that when you saw we? No, never really. I was uh, one time I was pushed into a barbed wire fence and cut my finger right next to the health centre in Uncle Patrick. So 
I went in there and they said, you're not a member here, we can't fix it. <laughs> 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 so I had to go to the top of the hill and Clyde Bank to get in there. Yeah, we taste it. of what it's like in America. <laughs> turned away for That's what it felt like, because I was like, could you just give Trying me a... crowdfund give... for your pinky. <laughs> <laughs> so they give me a plaster or something, and they're like, no, nah, we can't, can't sir. That was a day, along with the, the electric fences, like that was a thing that was a feature of childhood a lot, wasn't it? A barbed wire fence, you always try to climb over them. Uh, mm. You'd be trying like to get appetizing. it. Get that ball. Also, skinning your knees, that was a big fixture in my childhood. Oh, I've yeah. not skinned my knees for years. Did you ever used to lick your scabs? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't recall you... licking my scabs, no. I pick, pick, I pick, I don't lick. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, man. <laughs> what, um, why? Oh, I don't know why I asked that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking weird. Yeah, actually. just kidding, man. Kidding, man. I was actually... not, no, I was never in a fight. I got hooked in the ear once. A guy punched me in the ear, which I thought was a weird choice. No, uh, that is. maybe he missed. Uh, I also, once got yeah. I, I, a couple of times. I think I stood up. To, I may have punched somebody, or maybe somebody punched me. I can't remember. But another time, I stood up to a guy who was actually mates with, but it just used to be a bit thingy. And, I, and one time, I just I think I just punched him or something. But I mean, this is when you're like, again about nine or ten. Everything happened to me in childhood <laughs> the, between these <laughs> ages. You know, I fucking kissed that guy's ass, and I just went <laughs> fucking thunder. <laughs> Off the but I remember we were playing football or something, and like he just kept like saying stuff to me, and I, I, I think I'd said to my cousin before, I'm going to stand up to him. And then, and then I punched him and then he like pure ran away and it was like, aye. You, I you done, bullied him? I'd done the right thing. No, I was, I was standing <laughs> up to a bully and then the bully... Fighting fire with fire. Yeah. Becomes weak. Mark Sometimes talks with his fists, you know that. Yeah. But okay. that's the only time and I remember like pure skipping back to my house. Like, <laughs> but, I, I, we were like play fighting with these mad older guys. Basically they were bullying us. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 this guy who was like the best fighter was like chucking me about in that and then he <laughs> fell backwards and like I fell onto his nose with the palm of my hand and Aye. his nose burst and then like you paid for that didn't you no no because he, he, he actually <laughs> respected that he was like fair play. fair play and then all my pals not like, any of you finally could follow me up like that. <laughs> <laughs> all my mates were like oh you fucking you burst his nose and I was like of course I did <laughs> did you actually <laughs> your play up like that I was I, I I'm gonna fucking burst yours and all if you do <laughs> careful bleep this but I, I burst Kev's nose that's right I, I, don't you worry it's fucking yeah best day mm. of my life how's he getting on there I don't know. He just he never recovered. Never heard. <laughs> never heard much from never him after that. No. Yeah, and also one time I was at a house party. I got digged. Did you? Yeah. What this, this guy. It was this guy's birthday. It was just. Uh, it's just mental, and he just started. He fancied this girl, and my mate went round the back and was getting after, and then he went fucking mental, and he started like I was just in the corner, and he just started. Digging everyone in his sight, and then he went for me and he started Steve digging Austin me. In the fucking Royal Rumble. Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was trying to get out the door, and like someone was on the other side holding it. And I was like, What the fuck? And he was pure digging me. Fucking hell. Then we all ran away and stole his beers. I was once winded by uh, Robert Snodgrass's cousin. Why? <laughs> There's a sentence. There's a, yeah. Why did, how did, did they win you? <laughs> well, how did they win you? Fuck, yeah, he just digged me in the stomach. Uh-huh. I don't know why he chose stomach, but. Yeah, that's a, that's actually quite a, a harsh one to do. Yeah. A winding. See, yeah. I I think arguably you would take a, a smack in the face over a winding, depending on how severe it was. Because mm. the winding's just oh, again, like you're not winded often as an adult. No, nah. used to no. get winded what weekly as a kid. Yeah, a lot of times sometimes you'd be playing football and it hit you in yeah, the stomach or the football or in the, the balls or whatever. Take a, yeah, uh, ball in the balls. That's the closest you get, isn't an, an adult really? Isn't it? If you that's take one in the balls at five, uh, yeah, you top so. Or apparently, I mean, I'm not a dad, but you do hear it's the kind of thing stand up dads will talk about, like kids booting them in the bars and stuff. Like I do remember though being a wee guy and like always trying to like, fight my dad, like, whatever, and then like the, that you just knew that that was the only because they it's just seemed spot. so solid like, everywhere <laughs> compared to your wee weak body, but you just knew you had that wee weak. It's a good height for a wee guy as well. It's like one of those punching, you know, what do you call that where you rattle in the wee, <laughs> the wee, the wee bag. Big bag, yeah. yeah. And it's really the Achilles heel. Did your dad ever like rub his stubble on you? Aye. Fuck yeah. oh, I hated that shit, man. I know. If we were play fighting, he'd like fucking do that and it'd leave a horrible Sand. scab and then I'd lick yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> play the long game. So, something you actually enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, I hated that. that. You know. Uh, we got any listener questions? We've, we've got hundreds of listener questions, actually. Um, Did on... any of them want to know any of that stuff? No? I don't know, but Probably. I think that's, that seems to be the sort of stuff that people like to hear a lot, <laughs> actually. Um, I've not actually really Dad's had... Dad's stubble. I've not thought about that for a long time. Uh, yeah. Kind of uh, otherworldly when you're a, a wee guy. 
Also, I think Daz nowadays just have beers. Daz have got beers now. They don't need yeah. a clean shave anymore, do they? Yeah, it was a ferocious thing, Dad's though. Because, I mean, you'd still maybe get a wee scratch off of that, but it's not as bad. It can feel nice if you're kissing a guy, I don't think. Nah. Stubble. Nah. Hey, I, mean, I wouldn't think so. We've got a question here for Stuart. Oh, God. It says, go. Honestly, I felt butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> nah, Why is it just been winded? Yeah, I think it's right up your street, actually. It says, Stuart, recently on your Instagram, you asked people for a <laughs> tour. Feels like I gotcha. Yeah, you know, you asked people for a tour of the worst pubs in Glasgow. What yeah. was the worst pub you visited on that day out? Mm. <sighs> Good question. Well, I, so my, yeah, my pals it comes from Elliot this. Menzies, by the way. Just to Thank you, Elliot. I think, is it Elliot, Elliot Mingus? Is that how you say that? Yeah, probably. Well, it's like yeah. Mingus Campbell. Mingus yeah, well, Campbell. that's the old Mingus Campbell routine because I was obviously saying Menzies. And for the Mingus Ming Hotel, Campbell. it used to be called, and that is called the Menzies, that would Mingus Hotel people would call yeah. it. it was, What's the, what's the deal with Mingus? What's I don't get it. It's yeah. like no guy in it. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Right. I also don't think you can blame people for getting shit like the wrong. It's like, why would you look at that word and think it's pronounced yeah. Mingus? Makes no sense. goes like, I'm going to John Mingus for some paper and rolls. Well, I, the way in the co-op we'd get from Menzies, they'd get papers from Menzies, but if I ever said Mingus, I'd be like, what? Aye. <laughs> right. I don't think it's you Mingus. Mingus, right, Mingus Campbell. Yeah. Ming Campbell. <laughs> Ming Mingus. Is it Mingus or Mingus? Mingus, I think. Aye. Same thing. Man, it's fucking Ming Ging anyway. Ming <laughs> Mingus Menzies. Ming is not a good I was uh yeah, yeah Mink. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets called a Mink anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah fucking Mink. Mink. You bring that back. Yeah, Ben Rick. Fucking... <laughs> yeah, um, on that I, pub crawl, I joined late because I was supporting Josh Pugh, so I was late to the pub. Mm -hmm. But no, the places they went to. There, I, I go around town supporting people. Comedians. I was at work, right? So I was late. <laughs> but they went to uh, the Alpen Lodge. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff near Hope, like on Hope Street, uh -huh. near Central. Near you Hope specifically Street. looking for shape pubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was one of them. Yeah, we got recommendations, and yeah. we went to a bunch of them. Uh, I I joined at the Grant Arms. Yeah, you've been in there. That's the one under on the corner opposite McDonald's under. Uh, central four corners. Mm. We had a great time. I I've always seen that. It looks an old man put. But I bet you that would be good. To I them, think they just done up. It was karaoke. It was fucking rammed. Yeah. It was too rammed though. You know, it's when you kind of like you're not comfortable. People are knocking at you. That. But it was a good laugh. Yeah. Mm. I had a good time there. But they went to yeah went to the Toby Jug. Oh, Lodge. that's shit. Grand Arms. You've been in there. Jug been in the shit. Toby. Where is the Toby again? It's just next to. It's like opposite Central. Yeah, on Hope Street. We went. We watched a Scotland game in there one time, and like the there was like two wee fat tellies like that tiny oh, nice. like <laughs> 12 inches in the corner everyone's <laughs> that's a pub, those sort of pubs they just exist <laughs> because of their they're, they're just there and probably still exist probably just because of where they're situated people yeah. kind of be asked when they get to Glasgow there's a pub yeah Aye. That's yeah, yeah so there's enough trade to never bother doing that Aye. but everyone was talking highly of it they all had a good time in those places I I, I only really went to the Grant I suppose we were going to do more of the shite -y ones on like Soccer Australia like kilts and cocktails and places like that Aye. <laughs> but by the time it came to it like, we can't even fucking face we've been through, through too much today but there's a difference between shite old men pubs and shite tacky pubs like yeah you've got I'd like rather do old man than or, you know, yeah something like that yeah kilts and cocktails driftwood driftwood yeah, we've been in Driftwood. That yeah. was the that first. Fascinates that me was one yeah. of the first. But I used, that was again talking about where it's situated. See, because it's right there, just Sucky Hall Street. Yeah. I remember when I first started going up the tuna a lot. Like we would always go there, and it was just because it was like the first fucking thing that you stop at, and you yeah, just think, this oh, this is, is a, a pub in the tune. This is where people go. Yeah. But I think that is very much like people that only used to go to tune go there. Whenever I look in the window, which is often, <laughs> it always looks like it's just underage, isn't there? Aye. Me. Yeah, maybe it's just it me is. getting old. No, pretty much is. No. Uh, Shite's pub, I guess. Uh, I would have to say Grant's, but I had a good time. Mm -hmm. mm. Have you ever done a a sub crawl on the the, the subway? I did it in before I moved to Glasgow. Yeah, aye. I don't know if I've ever completed one anyway. No, I, I don't think one. anyone nah, completes it. I can't even remember some of the. It's weird because because I live here now and I know it well. By the time I didn't know Glasgow at all, so you never even really knew where you were. Where you were, and all the ones because we. I remember when I done it. Well, we started. We've done. We've, we've fancy dress first of all, right? And then you start as what, as what? I, I can't even remember the what mask. I was. I probably was. I probably went as Woody or something, but I can't even remember because I used to go. I used to have yeah. that a lot. <laughs> I think I just had that costume um, So I was probably Woody or something But I remember being fancy dress 
and we started at Ibrox for some reason. And then so, like, but see all the ones in the south side, they're Cessna and that shit. Yeah, it's the two very, real shitey ones in the road just, there. Uh, yeah. It's just that mad industrial trades yeah. to yeah. yeah, um, me, so The even. Lauriston's good next to Bridge Street, but then if you once you go past that, I think we went in there, but that's past. like, a, but the ones before that, well, it was just like, I remember it was like a big Rangers pub and they had the King Billy on it, and I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like, it was like, I'd never really been in one like that before. Um, and then I think that one at Lauriston, the, there's that, and there's a, there was a, Rangers pub I think next to that or something right. and people were going to one or the other and then we just kind of I think went into town uh, one or two and then we just went to West End yeah. and that was that did you ever do the sub crawl Steve? Uh, nah I don't know really I, I can't how many stops is there 12? Nah. you mustn't remember if you've done one or I thought, I, I, maybe we've started you know how crazy one, it gets when Steve's in fancy dress and all the <laughs> girls are flinging themselves <laughs> at him exactly I, yeah. be, a couple of stops in you'd be fucking I made it, didn't make it past one stop you know um, no I, 12 pints I couldn't do 12 pints I'd be dead nah, I'd, I think, I think, I think I it is it's like, it's, you start off doing that and then you eventually you get, get all excited and then you've had like five and the plans yeah. derail you get to somewhere uh, in town or the best end and that's yeah. I've answer. tried the golf one Pub golf. That's Aye, people often do that when well. they're doing a sub crawl, don't yeah. they? Aye, and it's like you've got five drinks to do a Guinness or whatever, five gulps, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Is that keen golfer, Stuart? Are you a cultural appropriation? Aye. <laughs> Never <laughs> got out of the old course. To um, we'll just go to the next one in, um, which this is Sophie says. I recently read Frankie Boy's Main Time, which I've read as well, and it's fucking brilliant. I really love it, and uh, very funny. She said, calls it a batshit detective novel. It's pretty much on the blob. Do you think you have a book in you? And if if so, what would it be about and what genre? For Steve, she's asking, <laughs> could Steve read a book? <laughs> <laughs> what book could you read? I've got an, this idea for a, a, a communist pig. Um, <laughs> an idea about that. I want to write a book. That'll be good. Like farms of it. <laughs> it's about communism and pigs, all right? Napoleon. <laughs> Uh, Napoleon? That's what one of them's called, I think. Oh, called, right, okay. Yeah. Right. To be fair. Try, I don't know if, try, try we gotcha no, there. But, um, <laughs> like, it's really about Stalin and shit. Or Aye, like. We all know that, Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got a book in me. If my agent or anyone's listening, yeah, I've got a book in me. Remember I told you that story that I thought about during lockdown? I think on one of our Patreons for What's the Script. Go on. Horror story set. Uh, Always horror with you. Mm-hmm. Yep, of course. Set in an IKEA. Oh yeah, you have told me this. Yeah, where it's a snow- that would be a good setting for a for a film. Is it a snowstorm? The guys go in because there's no windows or anything, and then they're like, "Oh, snowstorm! No one can go out. All the shutters go down, and then this chaos ensues." And then the big M Night Shyamalan twist at the end is there actually was no a snowstorm. It was just a guy causing havoc I don't know how that would work though it's kind of like Shutter Island or something it's like, <laughs> aye. Aye. but set in Ikea yeah it turns out that, aye. turns out wasn't it snowing there's a wee window at the office and the guy looks out and he's like oh it's sunny out there mm. it's a big twist it's good yeah what do you think surviving off meatballs alone for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would think I mean there could be worse places to get trapped see when I was a wee guy I was maybe about 13, 14 at this point and I decided I'm going to write a novel now yeah. <laughs> and like, it's going to be it. amazing. No, <laughs> but oh, I remember about so it. Ashamed of it. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't even know. I must have deleted it because I was probably just lost on like one of the old PCs whenever we lost it. But I was convinced. I'm like, do you know what? I'm just going to become a child. Like, I'm going to be a, a, child child genius, <laughs> a child genius writer. And I thought I'm just going to make. It, it's going to be like Billy Elliot, but about Fitba. And it was, but I'd never even seen Billy Elliot. I'd seen like five minutes of it or something. Um, but it was going to be Billy Elliot, but Fitba. And I was going to call it The Fields of Affin Rye. And I think, all I can remember was it was just like a wee boy. Like, I think he lived in a farm in Ireland or something, I'd said it. And he just like had a Fitba pitch. And it was just like him practicing Fitba. And that was as far as I got. <laughs> <laughs> the rest will figure itself out. Yeah, 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 you yeah. could sell out in Glasgow with that idea. I, I guess think. so. Do, yeah. do a wee stage play. Yeah, you know, book, book the pavilion now and just figure <laughs> yeah, out the rest. Yeah, it's like one of these plays like I'm no a Billy, he's a Tim or uh, one of these things. But, funny in that. Uh, no, but I, I was. I remember thinking, I'm gonna like just be. I'm gonna be famous soon. Like <laughs> because I'm just gonna be. This is gonna be amazing. And I was just making up as I went along, and I, I didn't think it last past like a couple of pages, probably. Fuck's sake! I've never had any desire to be an author. 
No. I say, no. Would you like to write an autobiography one day? Not really, no. No. I mean, if someone, I'll do whatever anyone pays me to do. But In many ways, asked. the podcast is the autobiography. I guess so. I yeah. just yeah. need to get a lot of transcripts. My memory's not very good. I'm not really arsed about it. If you had to to write one, what would you call it? My autobiography. Mm hmm. This time, I was getting this time it's McPersonal something like that that is good this time it's Steve McPherson. your worries at the door <laughs> we've already brought these ones up before I'm sure mind, uh, have we? Mind not on this maybe a new one mind uh, we were doing that chat AI thing oh that thing yeah, no yeah. but what would you actually want to call it if you had an autobiography what would you call it you can in push station <laughs> 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 Tales what, of Shagging. What would you do? See, when I was when I was Jenko Unchained, finally. Jenko yeah. Unchained, aye. Yeah. When I was young, I remember thinking I'd what well, was it uni or whatever. I remember thinking it'd be good I uh, think it'd be a funny thing to do. People have done this. I well, I used to I used to joke it'd be funny to call it my struggle, but then Paul Merton actually did do that. Uh, oh, really? and caught but I think it was uh, his character or something. But um I used to think it'd be funny to do it as like a sort of fake motivational thing, but it's like called settling for less and like how to how to like like fucking accept accept your shit life and blah blah. And I thought, here's what my life would have been if I hadn't done all this stuff that I at this point still hadn't done. But the problem is, you you don't you know it's meant to be an ironic title, and you don't want it to just you know you would need to get very successful before the point where it would be obvious that it is ironic and yeah. not just going I'm just settling for <laughs> you know doing whatever I'm doing, but. And I always wanted to do that and then just talk about because there's also a Nelson Mandela quote that's like, you know, life, you know, you can't settle for a life less than the one you want living. And I thought, oh, I could put that as the thing. Um, but I basically would be like, if I was ever, and then I'd be like, this is what my life would have been like if I'd, you know, decided to just go to uni and then get a job and, you know, get with the girl that I was, you know, liked in high school or whatever and just have a bland existence and settled, settled for a life that, I, you know, was just, be you know, rather than trying to be a bit ambitious and going outside. I'm going to say that would have been bland though. Was On paper, yeah. maybe this is but... true. This is true. <coughs> but it would I actually be more think, fulfilling. Yeah, maybe. But I think I had the problem went into stuff that I think it's all about. It would, the idea was like going into stuff your heart's not in, or because society tells you or whatever, rather mm -hmm. than yeah. yeah, following your your passions and desires. But then obviously the actual book would just have been about what actually happened and all that shit. <coughs> but um, it's Stevie B. You know. It's gonna. Be, we're gonna to need to write yours <coughs> posthumously. You <all> right? <coughs> I just had a mad cold for ages, and it's. Oh God, I've never seen cold. you get emotional like this. <laughs> <laughs> just so proud to be a <laughs> king's man. I, know, I was pretty. You know, I know that was. That was some pretty heartfelt stuff. I was five. Like, maybe I did actually. Uh, when I was about 12, I tried to write a screenplay. Did you? Called The Laszlo Kids. Okay, go on. It's, a, it's very clever. It's very. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a gangster film. A gangster film? Gangster film. Right, about what you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 12 year old kid. Is this right after you get that guy a bloody nose? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a made man now. Thought, you know, I, I, I used to love uh, films like Snatch, etc. How old are you at this point? I must have been 12, but maybe Snatch wasn't out. Maybe I was like 14. I'm also, I'd quite like you to follow up on what etc. is, what other films have watched. <laughs> you know, Snatch, etc. You know, <laughs> all the Guy Ritchie ones. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Sure, okay, right, fair enough. Rock and Roller. Mm -hmm. I think that was a later one. I didn't yeah, know. it was. I didn't, I didn't like that one. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I thought, oh, do you know what would be clever? This set in Glasgow. That was my unique Is that why there. it's called the Laszlo the Laszlo <laughs> Kids? <laughs> Which sounds like Glasgow. Was oh, that what that is? I didn't get that. Just knock two it's letters right off my head, Steve. <laughs> it's, 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 very it's clever. very clever. Did you just knock two letters off either end of the word Glasgow and you came up with a Put an L instead of a G. Laszlo. Oh. Glasgow, Laszlo. Oh, right, I just moved now. Right, right. Yeah. G L's instead of G's, essentially. All right. You know. So what were these Laszlo boys up to? Uh, I didn't really get much details down. I remember the <laughs> the start of it was so it's going to be quite Tarantino esque as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> A wide palette of uh, influences. <laughs> yeah. So the start of it was. Uh, a guy getting chased through an abandoned building and it goes into a toilet and it picks up Ikea? a 
Probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is all set in the same world. He picks up the... The, you the know, extended the... Steve cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> you know the bit on top of a toilet where the cistern is or whatever it is? Yeah. You know, the, the cistern. I think that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but that, that piece of... Thing, oh, the thing, thing, yeah. No, the, the thing bit that's on top, top of it. it. You know, like a... That you would lift up to get into the cistern. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. The sort of lid bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, fuck's sake. Can I phone call? If he's about my to agent. tell us he's in... My agent told the last <laughs> one. <laughs> Get back to Hollywood now. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that bit that you put on top of that, big fucking ceramic thing, guy smashes the cunt's head in, and then the blood spells out the last little kids. That's the, t- that's the title. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> like the like fucking Simpsons Treehouse of Horror or something. <laughs> I was influenced by that as well. And then so I you've just got a killer title sequence. T- killer title sequence. It was going to be to the music of uh, Bloodthirsty Bastards by uh, Dirty Pretty Things. Okay. Okay. You know uh, I, or, I can't remember how it goes. It was like fucking Carol Barat's band. I oh, know the band, yeah, I just can't remember the song. Uh, so I, ha- I had it all planned out. And then I, th- I didn't really know the middle, but the ending was going to be uh, the guy who got killed or who had done the killing. Waiting for the Shyamalan here, this is the final <laughs> influence. <laughs> it turns out it wasn't snowing at all the whole movie. <laughs> no, the guy who what killed. Even is La- in Laszlo in the end. <laughs> was it, it was actually set in Edinburgh. No. It was in Laid Lank in the end. <laughs> 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 the guy who killed the other guy, uh, so that guy had a son who got killed. The guy throughout the film. <laughs> this is all this podcast should be about, and it's basically all that our other podcast is, but it's funny as fuck. <laughs> the guy who got killed, his son grows up throughout it, and he, he's this main I gangster. Like boy, I will find like you. Whole, <laughs> no, you're following this guy so you don't see him growing up but uh, he essentially at one point so I, right, here's I can't I'm foggy in the details yeah, tough elevator these, these Hollywood Steve. execs are tuning out yeah <laughs> there's a at one point you know the song by Elvis Costello uh, is it a musical <laughs> 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 there's a, a lyric that he says carving V for Vando on the guilty boy's head so I was going to take straight that straight out and carve a V into this guy's head <laughs> and then at the end he takes off his wee hat and he's got a V in it and that's the big reveal is he was the wee guy all along so the son had this done to him when he was young so hold on what the the kids had a balaclava on the whole time. No, he had a wee, a wee beanie. It was a bit like Harry. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. Hello. It was a bit like Harry Potter as well. With the, yeah. The no, it's, a, the it's a V. It's a V, so it's different. Right. Uh, <laughs> he had a beanie on, right, the whole time. So you, this guy, you don't know that Growing he's... Growing up, over a period of years, he's had a beanie on the whole time. Well, this is where the Tarantino elements comes in. Because you see this wee boy and you're like, oh, is this in the same t- time as this guy? Turns out that's when he was younger. Right, so it's shot it's out happened. of chronology. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's a non-linear very structure. Clever, Steve. Very clever when you're fourteen. Uh, <laughs> that happens, and at the end, he reveals that his partner was the guy who killed his dad. He's like, "You drew this in my head." I don't know. The whole time, these two people, <laughs> he's never seen his forehead. That's they've got a big blood <laughs> relationship. <laughs> he's never seen his own forehead. <laughs> No, he's seen his own one, but his best pal has never seen his forehead, so oh, he doesn't yeah, yeah. know it's the wee boy that he's carved a fucking... <laughs> he's That's not hilarious. my best pal, you know, seen his forehead. <laughs> he's a great guy, but he will only show me his forehead, it's suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the big reveal at the end that's really funny there's also a scene that I remember <laughs> uh, that they're playing football with a guy's head who they chopped his head off played football that's right. actually in the fields of Athens uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we had then we just had to <laughs> shame us his head to kick around but, uh, it's, that was to the, the score of Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones right. I like how you've scored the whole film mm-hmm. it's, you've done yeah. It. yeah I've done a lot of work so if you're listening in Hollywood yeah. gonna need a big budget to license all these songs dirty pretty things you could probably get I could cheap. get them I could get them they Elvis could probably Costello's record dead. it no he's not is he not that'll be news to many people at home is he alive yep <laughs> you're thinking of Elvis Presley <laughs> <laughs> I think Elvis Costello died in the bathroom is that not who that film's about Elvis Costello no <laughs> tell me he didn't play Vegas what the fuck <laughs> listen I'm a fan of both I've why did you Elvis... Elvis Costello was dead he's an old name isn't he Oh, hey, his name is old because of Elvis Presley. I think he's had health problems, but um, to the best of my knowledge, he's still out there thriving, still gigging. 
I just assumed they was dead. I don't yeah. know. No, he's alive, man. But yeah, that's my screenplay last look. Unless we've got a scoop on here. After all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, by the time this goes out, if Elvis Castillo dies in the next two days, then... Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got a new found, FM found it recording. his wake with a V in his forehead oh. ah you know what's, who is the new uh, first minister Hamza ah oh, did he get it yeah. I yeah. Yeah. so Hamza's FM yeah. Elvis Costello's dead a lot of things have happened in this podcast I guess so I know well thank god for so what would you rate that on Rotten Tomatoes Rotten Tomatoes the from the, the, the picture of it I've got in my head I'd have to go straight down the middle 70% <laughs> I'll take that I'll take that <laughs> what about yourself I've not got it. I, I, I am Jenko. I, I am FJ. FJ. Um, for that, I'd, I'd need to give it a 26%. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've given you fucking loads how to go How do you feel, Steve, if you you made a version of that, right, but you earnestly believe it, and then it takes it becomes like a cult shite movie, <laughs> like, like The Room. The room I, yeah. Would you, how would you feel if that was your life? I think that'd be hilarious. I think it'd be fucking hilarious, obviously. But... I think that'd be such a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you go and rip people off at Comic Con and shit. It would be more embarrassing if people, if it was like a fucking critic's darling and I wrote it when I was 14. <laughs> you know, I mean, that would be that would be embarrassing for Roger Ebert. Yeah, he is dead. He yeah, is we dead. can confirm that. How are you getting on with them, Matt? I'm just going. To, I'm just looking at. There was one other uh, question I was going to bring. I up thought you were him. checking if Elvis Costello was dead. No, he's, he's just the first minister. He just got <laughs> bored and zoned out. He just killed himself because he had Steve's movie idea. <laughs> well, what put it this way? What would you prefer to watch that or the IKEA one? I think, the, I think the, the, the key thing they've got in common is glaring plot holes. That's, <laughs> that's like the signature of your work. What what plot holes? Oh, the cunt's ne- <laughs> he's never seen his pal's forehead. <laughs> That's not a plot hole, that's just They've a never joke. bothered looking outside to see if it's actually snowing. No, there's no windows in IKEA, that's why it's very clever. It's very clever. Uh, I'd like to watch them both back to back, double bell at the GFT, <laughs> followed by QA. And it's no longer than 90 minutes, you'll be glad to hear. Thank you, man. You, that, the first part of that Laszlo Kiss thing sounds like a f- sketch that we did end up filming. Um, remember when we done that zombie apocalypse one and we went up to mm-hmm. that old tower? Yeah, and uh, which is no longer there. I don't think that now. I think it's houses, but no, it's um, not. It was like the old water tower, and we were running and like you know running through with all the zombie stuff on. So in a way, you did create that. I create. I created a version of that. Sure. Yeah. And that was your first. That's my first film. Horror, a lot of work in horror, really. Mhm. Yeah. What else? Uh, the taxi one that you kept referencing. Well, when that, we did that Q and A. Is that the same thing? That's the same one. You did the one with. Uh, where you find is it Paul Doc and you you both got the masks on. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was one. I like horror comedy yeah. stuff, sure. Yeah. Sue me. I'm listen, I'm not gonna take you to court over this. I'm just it's just an observation. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So we've got one from uh I guess we should give him a shout out from Crispin. Oh, Crispin. nice one. Crispin Rose Deer, who, who dropped off some very nice uh, ciders. Yeah, some gifts for the boys. Stuart show. I think we'll drink those at the live show. Yeah, or pote- and and or potentially if we do a a Madway episode of the podcast. By the way, someone did comment saying that they listened to the podcast. Uh, this was Sandy Wilkie. He said, "I accidentally listened at half speed, and it made us all sound heavy, man." <laughs> so basically, that is yeah. if you want to just hear his sound, we would sound like at half speed. That's it. Yeah. Um, but Crispin is sent us a few questions. I think this will probably round off these this episodes. First of all, he says, "Went out in the razzle." Wow. Um, Razzle, 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 Razzle. Razzle. Yeah. What is your favourite and least favourite drinks? First of all, least uh, favourite, yeah. Sambuca. Yes, I was going to say. I was. I would also. No, I'm not a fan no of tequila. I wouldn't no thank you for a tequila either. I would, any kind I'd, of shot. I'd thank you for a tequila. Any I'd shot take a other than a over tequila rosy or, of course, well, Baby Guinness. Friend of the show, Baby Guinness. A uh, tequila rosy. No, you know a fan. Uh, I like it. I love it. It's because uh, the creaminess I don't like. Um, <laughs> One of the ingredients is tomato sauce. <laughs> it's too close. <laughs> Should yeah. be. It's horrible. Now yeah. Sambuca. I've not drank it since I waited at a taxi. I was at the garage drinking mm-hmm. Sambucas all night. Fucking projectile vomited at a taxi window. 
Two things I can really drink. I don't like to drink because of drinking them previously. Cider for when I was like just starting drinking. Mm-hmm. I just don't like it anymore because it just reminds me of Thanks for giving a cider though, Crispin, the person who sent in this Yeah, yeah. Not, Love I would say ones. that type of cider probably not like, but it's the strong going. I can't I can't go because yeah. I, I used to get pulse when I was a wee guy. Yeah, I'm um, kind of the same. And also I can't really drink Corona or any Corona esque beers because they used That's to always a wee have guy drinking it, Corona and Sol and stuff like used that. Used to always mm-hmm. have them with Bully and Clay Back. I don't know if you ever had them. I uh, put a wee lime in it. I don't that you'd put a lime in the beer. I, I'm I'm not a fan of these days. I can't do peach snaps or Jack Daniels from overdoing it. Why? And yeah, shitty ciders that you would drink when you were like 15 as well. Yeah. It's a struggle. I hate when they, if you ask for like a Corona or whatever in a nightclub and they would put it in a glass, they pour it into the glass, the bottle, brutal, brutal. and then put a lime in, a floating lime in the glass. That's the glass was such a thing. I'll tell you what my favourite ones are. I've got, um, I do like a white Russian, I must say. I love a white Russian. A white Russian. I overdid those at yeah, I've done them a few times, not, but not a good day the next day. Tell. But uh, I always my my standard is a uh, spice rum and, and diet coke. And uh, shout out to Liam Wiffnell by the way for uh, he opened for me at the Kings and he, he bought me a very nice bottle of spice yeah. rum, which I think you recommended actually. Yeah, because yeah. he asked me, he was like, "What does Mark drink?" And I was like, "I think he drinks spice rum and diet coke." And I was like, "Oh no, but that's what I drink." And I thought maybe I've confused. No, we always get the thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 we um, drink the same. But the uh, thing, uh, do you know, there's a thing I like. Boy as well. It's my mum used to like it, but it was. I had it and our time as well. It's called Frangelico and it's like mm. it tastes. Mm. And I, I remember I was in London once and it was a uh, I was with Mick Ferry and he loves it. And we went, This is random as fuck that we ended up even out together, but <laughs> it was just me and him. And he's like, It tastes like it tastes like Ferrero Rocher. And it does, it tastes like Ferrero so Rocher. What is it? It's just like, like a it? sort of amaretto or a liqueur, oh, right, yeah. but hazelnut it's really, really nice. Yeah. I use like hazelnut and it's it is beautiful. So I'm and actually, we were in this, this restaurant in Perth. We do it for a Ray took us out for a curry because we like, basically let him stay there for I don't know, maybe for cheap at least and uh, they had it and honestly so we had a shot and they were all like this is fucking magic so I is what do nice. you call it when you get like a wee shot after your dinner what's that aperitif I think is that before oh, I can't remember Dinner. it's something like that yeah something like that because digestive, digestive I think digestive. is after help you digest yeah. it aperitif these things in your yeah. mouth you know yeah um, you can have that, sir. <laughs> you can have it. You can keep that. <laughs> uh, I, I had a wee lemon cello after dinner one time, and it was class. Lovely, love, lovely it. touch. I, I've always looked at it and thought that I will hate that, and then I had it, and I was like, "That's lovely." It was good. Right. Yeah, um, I would do Guinness Lager, Spice Rum and Diet Coke. Your faves. That's that's my go to. Stevie? Stevie, don't mind. Uh, I like a red wine. Yeah, I've been I've been into my wine recently. I love seeing wine. you swelling a gla- glass of red wine. Love it. I'm going to try and get more in, yeah. Big black you just You just feel sophisticated, but then you're talking shit to someone and yeah, you look like you've just <laughs> a pen's bust in your mouth or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a wee red wine, I'd like a pint of whatever you got. Beer, uh, lager, and uh, the spice drum and coke. Yeah. Um, I'm not fussy about what beer though. Second of the Do you, three. Are you into your IPAs? Or? No, I hate that. To no. Me. I don't mind I it. I think I got into just drinking them out of habit, and then I was like, after a while, I was like, I don't actually like this. Yeah, it's just what uh, other it just people are became drinking. became trending, isn't it? Aye. Um, nah, it's not bad. Now and again. I'm a tenant's boy, but there's no pain in me to say that. Right. I wish they, they would. fucking should. I yeah. wish they would. So, oh, right. Second, I'm going to ask Crispin's third question next, and then we'll get the second one um, last year. Got that sense of structure. Mm-hmm. Yes, he says. What is the most awful item of clothing you have seen the other two ever wear? <laughs> <laughs> this is a. Hot, this is a I know. I actually thought tough. it was a bit. You can. I, I'm also going to just say here. You can say what's your least favorite item of clothing that you've worn yourself. I don't like to. It's not a type of show. I don't, like to slag uh, I don't want to be slagging each other. I've got a, uh, I've got a leather jacket, shirt jacket that I bought off ASOS when I was about eighteen, nineteen, twenty ish. And I thought it looked great and I wore it and I just looked like a fucking dick. And yeah. I was like, I hate this. But it was about <laughs> 70 quid, which like to me was like the most amount of money I'd ever spent on anything. Yeah. And I've still got it and I'm nearly 30 now and I've worn it like once in like yeah, 12 years. And I'm like, one day I'm going to wear that and it'll look all right. Yeah. And I tried it on recently and I still thought I looked like I can't. Yeah. I've got a couple of those items that I've worn once. I, I bought one of those fucking reversible bomber jackets with like a big fucking dragon on the back yeah. uh, wore that. <laughs> oh you get the dragon thing got, wore that. did you not write a sketch about it or something yeah I wrote a sketch about it afterwards but I wore that in one night out and then I returned it the next day because yeah. I couldn't face it um, also got one of those <laughs> wee 
you know, there was that wee, there was that wee guy who sings the song to Jingle Bells wrong, you know, his wee. Oh, uh, Waffle Soap and Slay. <laughs> yeah. I got one of his wee jackets and then I realised it was the same one for that video and I was like, I'm never <laughs> oh. wearing that. That's a good jacket. It's nice, I'd nice wear the jacket. Waffle Soap and it's Slay associated. jacket. It's associated, it's like my fucking Jeffrey Dahmer glasses, you can't wear them if they're associated with somebody. Yep. It's Especially because not... I'm a wee guy as well, people would just go, are you, are you him? I bought a Rugrats jumper the other day from a charity shop because it was three quid and I thought it was funny, but I've not had the confidence to wear it yet. I think you could get away with Rugrats. I do think it looks quite cool, but I don't know. I'm, yeah. in, I'm into Rugrats enough. Yeah, Tommy Pickles. It just kind of looks like I've had a bit of a breakdown as an adult, though. I know, but some people can pull off, like, cartoon things. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a wee Mickey Mouse one and I don't know if I've quite pulled it off. I was thinking about buying a Mickey Mouse one. I had a wee, wee Mickey Mouse in the pocket. Oh, I can see that. It'd look cute. I liked it. Be trying like there's there's plenty of stuff that I've just I that I've I've no suited or whatever. You You've got a pretty, you know, it's not like you, I've never seen you wear anything too outlandish. I used to wear a leather jacket for. In fact, I'll tell you what it was. I've seen actually. you in a leather jacket. Yeah. I used to um, when I when I was early twenties, I'd, I'd get into a habit of buying all the wee shitty like fucking. Uh, wrist things now yeah. like, for for top man, and I'd sometimes wear like mad like chains, like like just like I don't know, like just almost like pure, no like Russell Brand. I wasn't trying to be Russell Brand, but like that kind of hang of like. Do you remember metrosexual was a word that was around a lot when we had a lot of accessories. <laughs> I, yeah. I just started wearing loads of accessories for for no reason. I don't mm. know why. Just I uh, when I went to I think and I, was... I, I used to wear the scarfs. I sometimes would wear a scarf in a nightclub. <laughs> I've, I've yeah. And uh, I was I had a lot of snoods. A lot of snoods. <laughs> I <laughs> never had snoods. I know. Uh, that was a thing for a way. It was like for River Island and stuff. It was the t shirts and they would have the wee the wee kind of hood. Yeah, I hate them. Oh, oh, yeah. And I was also a big proponent of the the buttoned up shirt. Again, it was a style for a while. Like the top top mm. button. Top button. I've done that. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever have the onesie shirt where it was the shirt and a jumper, but it was like stitched in. Stitched in. I bought one of those. Ones. No. <laughs> yeah, horrible. Do you know what I had hundreds of that I bet we all had was that when in the top man era when it was the shirt and it had the collar that's like the, yeah. be like oh, the trim. Buttons. Not dissimilar to this in that the trim's different, but the that, collar's like. That's, I had a like blue. Or yeah, yeah. Like bl- light, it was all like neon colours and horrible. shit. There's a holiday. Honking. Honking. There's a holiday yeah. when I was in Mali. That I've and got... three quarter lengths. <laughs> yeah. I'm like 15. I think there's actually a picture of me wearing that exact outfit. Yeah. It's like the blue. <laughs> as, uh, you can see, and I had the fucking. One tips not at the time, it's like all my Malia 09 fucking 40s or all that. Yeah. Um, I yeah. also, but that this is the thing is you always recognize it when you see somebody do an open spot and they'll like, still sometimes dress like this when they put on the fucking waistcoat, the white shirt oh, with the, the black waistcoat. It's so fucking much. brutal. But I, so I did have there. one for a while and I don't think I've ever probably performed on stage, but I definitely the odd time would wear it out and yeah, yeah. I had. I, I was went, trying to. It's just too I try hard. It? Cool. I think it's just because I hate magicians. Yeah, yeah cool, uh, snooker players and all. You like them though? I like snooker. But yeah, I kind of went. I went through a wee half phase of that, and also a phase of fucking wearing blazers to like the garage. Like, who are you? Uh, ah, yeah, you, you. I remember you was a blazer guy. I want to be able to wear a blazer, but I feel self conscious when I wear one. I think. See, when you see like other adults and like probably the guy that would be like my age and he's wearing a blazer and it looks normal, and you never bat an eyelid. Yeah. If I wear a blazer, I feel like a wee kid at like a wedding. <laughs> Aye. I'll think I look like a fucking idiot. Aye. Well, that's I nearly wore a suit at the Kings, and because I just was thinking it's appropriate big for that occasion. thing, big occasion. But then I just thought it just doesn't suit me. I don't think the style yeah. mm. in particular the material not. So I just thought I'm going to dress the way I normally dress, just buy a nicer shirt. I ended up actually wearing an old shirt that I'd had for about three years ago that I'd never worn, and I still had the tag on it, and I was like, oh fuck, it fits me again. Because I'd bought a really nice one for, like, it was a bit more expensive, but it didn't fit me as well. So I just ended up wearing that old one. Right. So That looked good. Good yeah. fit. Thanks, mate. Sadly, I can't answer the question about the ones I think are bad about you guys, because I've never actually seen Steve wear the I Heart Bad Girls t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love that. That lives in my mind. <laughs> I used to have one of those ones. I think I got it, again, I got it for a holiday. Um, I think it's the top man or something just said I do me or something like that and Jesus. that is probably the worst thing I've ever won <laughs> I've got a picture of it and I'm like oh, I'm a bo- I actually had the leopard print boxers as well and I had the boy I look like a cunt 
but I'll put it on that. The page There's in. always those t shirts like if you mind we done a sketch about it, uh, like if found please return to the pub or whatever. Yeah, yeah that female kind of, body investigator. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever it was yeah, used to see, I used to see people with them in Asda all the time when I worked in Asda you just see people wanting about with these stupid t-shirts with these slogans and like but they just look miserable and I used to always think like, this is so stupid <laughs> no one's getting laid in those t-shirts because nah. actually me, me and my mate Nick Afton who just filmed the special shout out um, we were wanting to write a sitcom about a supermarket when because we both worked in supermarkets when we met at uni and that's what we were about to do just before I started comedy and I used to, all, I had all these no. Anytime I'd seen somebody and I was there with a stupid shot of those, I always just thought it'd be funny to just have them floating about the background <laughs> as like his exes, but it would just never, like, it'd never be commented on or whatever. There was also a, a, I remember a classic was, I've got the body of a god, dot, 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 a Buddha. Aye, shite. Pure That's classic. Great. Very Brilliant. good stuff. Absolutely. But anyway, right, the third one, and I think we'll finish on this, is. Obviously, we've just we've got these wee things because Glasgow Glasgow Comedy Festival. I mean, you're here. doing them like I, I swiped them from a bar last night. Yes, not? Yes. <laughs> they weren't given to us. Um, but the uh, it's just kind of finishing up now. I suppose. Where do you see yourselves twelve months from now? I reckon I'll be sitting here still doing this, and I'll have just done another preview at Van Winkle for my next show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hopefully just filmed the last one at the stand. Exactly the same. Maybe you'll be at the Kings next year. Maybe, oh, maybe we'll Genics. be at the Kings next year. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't try to think about shit like that. Yeah. Honest. I'll be sitting in Hollywood with Laszlo Kids on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a live Q&A, Laszlo Kids. And <laughs> smoking a big stogie. I'm hosting, me and Mark are hosting the Oscars and you're, you're winning Best Picture. <laughs> For the <laughs> last look. Kids, learn from my mistakes, okay? Don't go on the train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't. It's very silly. I mean, do you guys have goals for like, next year? Or like, is, is there... I've just... See, because I've just completed a thing that, like... You've been building towards I've that I've been building towards. I just... I'm a pure threat, blank slate and I, I'm, I've got a show for the Fringe that I'm going to write new but it's like it's but i don't know but like what i would want to do with it going into march like i probably do feel like i'll need a break at some point but mm -hmm. i don't know but i i just hope to you kind know, of keep this going to be honest keep keep the podcast uh growing hopefully and um and then just carry on with stand up and just you know hopefully kind of continue putting it like you know making shows and uh that people want to come and see i guess so yeah. just i don't know what what quite but just more of the same just i suppose keep plugging on keep you? plug keep I on guess. keep on yeah, you know, sometimes you're more in love with it than others, but it's the kind of the nice thing of like if you enjoy what you're doing, then you're not that arsed about what you're doing in a year. I'm happy Just, now. That's it, because you know that's the main thing about with stand up. It's like particularly when you can get to a point where you can do it and you don't need to do another job. It's like you just want to be able to keep doing that now. So mm -hmm. so only keep doing that. Hopefully, bigger and better as we go on. I'd but, like uh, to like jamily get an advert or something by a house. That would be good. Yeah, that would yeah. be good. Or if we can just whatever you want, as long as it's not like arms dealing or something though yeah mm. something ethical yeah with a new face of save water like i seen pep guardiola isn't it oh really me and pep yeah. yeah that'd be an unlikely double act well yeah you're on a model of course did we, we spoke yeah. about this in the podcast yeah, yeah. I think don't know good. yeah no i know i just just more of the same hopefully as they hopefully just keep because we're nearly a year into the podcast now coming up for it i Decent. i know that's right um mm. Thanks for sticking with us. I know, thanks. Because uh, so actually Robbie McShane sent me a screenshot of the that gig. Remember I told that story in like the first episode of Would You Expect I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Ecstasy? ecstasy. Yeah. Uh, he, Robbie McShane was on stage when that guy was doing all that. And he sent me a <laughs> screenshot like one year to the day that that happened. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's fucking hilarious, man. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. Nearly one year to the day since you told that story. Full on circle. Here. That's it. Yep. Well, I know. Well, no, that's it. Well, I think that's a nice place to leave it. Then hopefully we'll, we'll still just be watching this in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In any case, Crispin, and hopefully it'll not be just just the guys that are on Patreon. I know, but more and more of you guys watching at home. Um, as ever, if you have enjoyed the episode, you can like and subscribe on YouTube. You can give us a five star review on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and you can follow us at Summer Pod and Instagram, at TikTok, and Twitter, and um, give us a thought and emails at summerpod at gmail.com I don't think we'll get into blog at the moment although the tickets for Edinburgh Festival do go on sale very soon mm -hmm. um, so keep an eye out for them we'll be posting that on all our individual progresses and stuff social so medias what progress any? have you got any? I've got two at Monkey Barrel in April and May if you go on their website mm -hmm. and uh, I've got one at Top Secret in London in July brilliant 
I will have, I'm not getting it in the moment, but I will probably need to get stuff booked in pretty soon. Stevie, yourself? I've got two at Top Secret in London, one at Angel London, one at Pleasance London. Cool, yeah, a lot of London. None in Scotland. London, <laughs> 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 London centric. Guys, come on. Hollywood's down Some in London. Some of us actually like Scottish people, so we do our work up here. I'm yeah. doing one at Van Winkle in Glasgow and I'll do some. So am I. I do think, though, what we want to do, this will probably be exclusive for Patreons uh, for tickets first. Um, as we will do probably I, in my head anyway it'd be good to do a, a freehander preview for Fringe with the three of us it makes sense and just oh, some, some laugh yeah. guess but a, a some laugh stand up special I'm slightly worried about everyone that wants to see it seeing it before it's ready that's true which but. is why it's only going to be for Patreon so if you fucking want to actually see it you need to sign up let's do it and then, but yeah. that guys thank cheers you guys and we will speak thanks to you. so much have a good night